Today we're at Wageningen campus where we'll have a discussion with uh, Martin Kroll and Gijs Boerwinkel about citizens and urban air quality. As an NGO representative and a scientist, they may have very different perspectives on citizens and air quality. And I hope that you're as eager as I am uh, to hear what they have to say. Hi Gijs and Martin. Thank you for joining us. Uh, today we will have a discussion on uh, air quality in cities and in particular about uh, uh, citizens and data. And my first question is to you, Martin. Um, when you look at sustainability transitions in cities, um, is air quality still to be considered as an important topic? Yeah, I think air quality is, is always important. And uh, if you look at, say, Beijing, mm -hmm. Everybody knows the air quality is, is very poor there. And when you look in Amsterdam, it's much better, but still at some places it is an issue. Yeah. So the standpoint should be the cleaner the air, the better it is for human health. Yeah, yeah. The cleaner the better, but uh, could you maybe also say something about the speed at which air quality in cities is improving? Yeah. Yeah, so, so in the European Union there have been measures, especially in transport technology, that clean mm -hmm. up the air. Mm -hmm. But in other regions of the world, in Beijing it is starting, but in the south, in Kampala for instance, uh, there is still all technology that pollutes the air. Yeah, yeah. So, and um, Gijs, uh, when we look at Amsterdam, what are the developments uh, here? Uh, um, well, you see that on the average, uh, you could might say that the uh, situation is improving, although citizens uh, do worry a lot and yeah. do engage a lot in this topic since uh, some of the specific streets that are very polluted are not improving at all. Yeah. Uh, and these are the particular streets where citizens are very engaged in uh, getting involved in the topic of air quality since they are the ones yeah. uh, that suffer the most from the uh, negative effects. Yeah, yeah. And um, Gijs, what are some of the reasons for citizens to uh, engage with uh, air quality activities in their cities? Um, well, uh, there are multiple. First of all, um, there are people who live next to these very polluted streets, as I mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, which give them a, a clear reason to participate in uh, a project that no, well, sort of researches the real situation there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What they see is that the official institutes um, they, uh, they do measurements, but yeah. they make uh, uh, estimations and they make general um, uh, assumptions about uh, averages of the air quality in the city. Uh, and what the citizens really want is want to see the difference between street to street level. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So this is, uh, for example, a very important reason they, uh, they are joining for these kinds of activities. Yeah. Other reasons could be that citizens see that uh, technology becoming more uh, affordable and more easy to use. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, and they think this is very uh, interesting to work with this new technology yeah. to map yeah. the world around yeah. them. So to, to measure uh, yeah. air quality themselves. Yeah, it's becoming yeah. more popular to measure your own body, your own environment, and the yeah. air quality is yeah. just uh, yeah. a very important part yeah. of that. Yeah, so uh, what Gijs is telling might be specific to Amsterdam. And uh, Martin, could you maybe reflect on what is happening in cities around the world? Yes. Yeah, so there, there are large differences, not only in the level of air pollution, mm -hmm but also how people cope with air pollution. Mm -hmm. So for instance, if, if we go to Beijing, mm -hmm. then people are extremely worried for good reasons about their health. Yeah. And they feel the, the bad air entering yeah. their, their body. Mm -hmm. So they cope with it, for instance, by wearing protection, mm -hmm. or for instance, they say, well, it's dangerous for my kid. So yeah. I, I take the kid to school with a car. Yeah. Yeah. And if we go, for instance, to Kampala, their air quality problems are also very prominent. Yeah, yeah. But there it's very difficult to, to, to get a solution for it because the yeah. government is, is not doing anything to pre prevent air pollution. Yeah, yeah. So there is a triad of, of people and governments yeah. uh, and other parties that, yeah. that really yeah. uh, are at uh, uh, cooperating in, in discussing air quality. Yeah. And Gijs, how about the role of the government in, in Amsterdam? 
Well, in relationship to the government, um, uh, this can be uh, a tension between the, the, the citizens and the government, yeah. since you see that uh, some of these people who organize themselves uh, uh, get help from um, uh, organizations that fight for cleaner uh, environments, yeah. and these organizations, uh, they work together with the citizens to sue the government to uh, force them to act, to act uh, and to uh, define measurements uh, or define measures that uh, improve the quality of the air. Yeah. So uh, the, the, the relationship is a bit different, but again, uh, citizens are really forcing uh, the government with their data yeah. to, to yeah. take action. Yeah. Okay, but how are citizens then informed about air quality in the cities? Uh, well, in the Netherlands and in Amsterdam, normally the official institutes, uh, they have measurements and they, public, they, they publicize this data uh, on certain platforms. Mm -hmm. um, but you see that uh, because of this technology becoming uh, uh, better and better sophisticated, that um, citizens can attribute a lot of data to this uh, information that the government is giving the citizens. Mm -hmm. So I think that uh, where you see citizens being dependent on the government on information, yeah. uh, they take the, the uh, they take their own steps to uh, come up with their own data uh, and gather their own data and an analysis itself. Sorry, um, and you see that the government data and the citizen data are uh, sometimes conflicted. But I think when you look at ways to Combine this, where the government could fill up their uh, their blank spots or uh, their their the the spaces in the city where they don't have measurements. Citizens can come in mm -hmm. and attribute mm -hmm. data to that. So mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. uh, it works both ways. While well, now uh, it's mostly the the government that sends information. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I agree, but there is of course an issue with the quality of the data. That's yeah. also what you say. That sometimes and and measuring air quality accurate. Yeah. Is, is very difficult. So there will always be a big role of the government and scientists to, to really calibrate these measurements and, and make sure that the public is informed with the right numbers. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I definitely don't think that the citizens will replace uh, any official institutes at all. Yeah. I think uh, the citizens can only attribute more valuable data to these institutes uh, and by working together create a better uh, a, a better image of, of the, the environment around them. Yeah. While you see that some of the official institutes see the citizens sensing as a sort of threat, like they're doing our job, mm -hmm. while others, uh, other experts in air quality measurements, they see it as a potential for better mm -hmm. uh, and more, uh, more data. Yeah. 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 But in China, that is totally different. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because in China, people are very worried yeah. and, and they press the government to, to to take measures to clean yeah, up the air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and there also you, you get now the tendency that, that there are NGOs or, or organizations yes. starting to measure the air quality yeah, yeah, just to yeah. help the citizens against uh, for their plea for, for cleaner air. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you say that citizens and NGOs pressurize the state uh, on air quality data, uh, but could you maybe tell a bit more about the roles of NGOs then? Yeah, that is of course a very difficult situation because uh, it's very restricted what NGOs can do. Mm -hmm. So they are more or less regulated. But nevertheless, uh, if citizens and NGOs work together mm -hmm. and uh, enforce the government to provide better information on air quality, I, I think there is something to gain and it gives people also insight in, in the situation and they can adapt their behavior on, yeah. on the specific situation of air quality on a particular day. Okay, so uh, Gijs, of course you are uh, from Waag Society, an NGO in the Netherlands. And um, what could you say about uh, the role of NGOs in Amsterdam in this respect? Well, in the project we did, um, we didn't really took the role of uh, this air quality NGO from China. We were more, uh, we're focusing more on technology. We see the potential of technology growing, but the access to technology declining. So what we try to do is um, uh, inform citizens about technology uh, and make sure they uh, become owner of technology, mm -hmm. know what's mm -hmm. inside of this technology, so they're able to uh, form the technology to their wishes. Yeah. Uh, and what we see with these air quality sensors is that citizens, when uh, having an air quality sensor, ask uh, um, 
way different questions than official institutes do. So what we try to do is democratize this technology to the hands of the citizens mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. and make sure that they can ask the questions to the technology they want yeah. uh, and they can have like a... Um, uh, a future or define their own future based on the technology they're using yeah. instead of techno technology being pushed upon them yeah. uh, we hope to give them uh, access and know-how to the technology so they can use it for their own uh, own purposes yeah. Yeah, in Kampala the situation well it's it, the quality of the air is a, is a kind of uh, blind spot there. Yeah. there there are hardly any measurements people mm -hmm. know that well from the measurements there are we know that the air quality is bad yeah and there are local organizations, but also international organizations that, uh -huh. that work together yeah. to, to really uh, uh, get a better air quality also in Kampala because they know it, yeah. it is affecting yeah. the people, people's health. For yeah. instance, uh, indoor cooking and, yeah. and this kind of technologies that, that need to be replaced in order to get a better air quality. Yeah. Yeah. So we see that citizens and NGOs are co-creating solutions on air quality. Uh, and that the state is less present here. Yeah, the state the state is less present, uh, so they are, they are not providing the information about the quality of, of the air, no. uh, and and they also do not have the means to to really uh, stimulate clean technology. Yeah, yeah. So so there's a totally different role of the government in in for instance Kampala than than in Beijing and in Amsterdam. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, um, with respect to citizens and air quality, uh, which developments do you expect for the future? Um, well, what you see happening now in uh, major cities is that uh, these so-called smart cities becoming more important, where mm -hmm. uh, top-down sensors are being uh, pushed all over the city and measure everything from air quality to uh, presence of uh, groups of people yeah. uh, and I think a counter movement has been starting here where citizens uh, want to take action on their self uh, mm -hmm. and become owner of their own technology yeah. um, so I think concerning the future and air quality I think the technology is, is becoming more sophisticated uh, yeah. the problems are becoming more complicated uh, and I think citizens will see that they have to work uh, together in groups but also need the experts on air quality mm -hmm. to come up with more and better informed data yeah. um, and I think these uh, the people that are concerned about air quality uh, is a group of people that is growing since the topic is uh, is staying there mm -hmm. um, and I think new ways of working together with uh, official institutes and citizens um, will become more and more important in, in tackling these issues. Yeah, so, but I think it's also about making cities more democratic. Yeah, exactly. If you use technology uh, for your own questions and your own purposes, uh, and you know what the sensor that's hanging at your door is measuring, then you're really uh, owner of your technology. Yeah. Uh, if you have a, a huge sensor in the central uh, square of the city where you can know what it's measuring, you're not really owning uh, or uh, influencing this technology. The technology is influencing you. So I think more and more people will uh, uh, become aware of this, uh, become more interested in the technology and therefore become owner of their own technology. Yeah, so uh, we've seen this about Amsterdam, but uh, Martin, uh, what could you say about other cities in the world? Yeah, I think in, in other parts of the world, the, the, the most important thing that should happen is that cleaner technology is, is being implemented. Uh, because we know that, that, uh, that there are important factors that can improve the air quality. Yeah. Think of clean transportation, public transport, uh, all these kind of issues. Yeah. Yeah. And, and these are important factors and of course it would be very nice to measure on, on every uh, location in, yeah. in, in Beijing the air quality, but everybody sees that the air quality is really poor because they cannot see the sun. Yeah, yeah. And, and that should improve first, yeah. so, so that means really that, that the government has to take action to enforce clean technologies in, in the industry and yeah, the transportation yeah. sector. Yeah, yeah. And for Kampala, this is of course uh, also a very difficult situation yeah. because there is a complete lack of knowledge about the air quality situation, yeah. which is probably very bad. Uh -huh. uh, but, but also there, all technology is, is still being used. Think of uh, uh, old cars with, with poor technology that yeah. really pollute the air. Yeah. Yeah. And there are a lot of dirt roads that bring in a lot of dust in the air, yeah. which, which is uh, 
not good for the air quality. Yeah. Okay, many thanks, Gijs and Martin, for sharing your thoughts about citizens and air quality. Uh, as you see, citizens are important stakeholders when it comes to urban air quality. They are the ones who breathe uh, fresh or polluted air, and they are therefore also motivated to co-create solutions and sustainability transitions in cities. Um, and as you have seen, they do so uh, in different ways and in different cities around the world. Mm -hmm.